Welcome, everyone, to the Circle of the Mate podcast top five picks of the week for week 50. Since we uh, did not do for week 49 because we were on meeting vacation, it was Mania week. Yeah, and we uh, were waiting to see if this WrestleMania on last Sunday, WrestleMania 37, if it would qualify for this list, too. Exactly. I didn't want to make, make my list and be like, well, 37 blew me out of, out of the water. Let's add it to the list. Uh, save to <laughs> save, it's on your list, you're fired. <laughs> That is right. The host of Devious One, obviously, here with my familia with the faction, the West Side Story. That is right. The director, the one and only CK1, Chris Kelly. Chris Kelly. We got big things coming at the end of this month, homie. I'm excited. Yes, we do. And also, I have the master of disaster, the king of sting, the man with the plan, and that is Money Mike Lopez. That's right. Don't just use your fists, you use your elbows too. <laughs> and that's right for the top five picks of the week. Today, ladies and gentlemen, it is our top five WrestleMania pay per views. Like how CK1 said earlier, we wanted to wait to see if this actual WrestleMania was going to probably be in our list. So, but it, we don't know. We don't know as we speak. <laughs> so now that we go ahead and put the wheel of names and see who goes first. Oh, we got a one in three chance of going first or last. Mm-hmm. If you ain't first, you're last. Brought to you by Con- Constant Contact. Work smarter, automated email marketing. Oh, yeah, we don't need that. Yeah. All right. Here. I like that save 30% at Walt Disney Resort, so we'll take that. Whoa. <laughs> hey, right? Count oh, me yeah. in on that. <laughs> <laughs> Spin that wheel. Spin. Oh. Uh, it Wrestle is. Mikey. Uh, oh, money. Oh, my of course. Lopez. Was there ever any doubts? Actually, no. there was. <laughs> the floor uh, is yours. Man, let me just say, WrestleMania is one of those events that I honestly, to this day, even, yes, even with all the nonsense and the mumbo jumbo that goes on, uh, I always look forward to it. And this was no different this year, but this year's wrestlemania definitely did not make the list but here are the ones that did i'm starting off with where it all begins again number 20 yes wrestlemania 20 i fondly remember that pay-per-view uh especially the ending you know you had eddie guerrero coming out to congratulate chris benoit tears rolled out of people's eyes myself included 16 year old mike cried damn it and and you know what it was a great great moment uh let's see uh you had rock and mick foley versus evolution you know uh let's see what else you had you had um john cena defeating the big show for the u.s championship oh, of course john that, Cena's wrestlemania debut i actually know that yes yeah. absolutely he started off the show and classics like goldberg versus brock Number one. <laughs> oh, there. I mean, no WrestleMania is perfect, of course, but this one was a very enjoyable one for me. Was this the one where Eddie uh, he loosened his boot and when yes. Kurt went for the ankle lock, the boot slipped off and Kurt, yeah, dude, classic Eddie, bro. Miss that, uh, miss that guy, man. Yes, classic you finish know, there. And yeah, and Molly Holly got shaved bald. Oh, as, that's as right. I forgot about that. You got the straight yeah. society. Yeah. Uh, number four is wrestlemania 30 this could have gone higher but for you know there's some matches there that i did not really and like like but you got you can't take it away yes so mania as they said Mm -hmm. you know daniel bryan the fans got behind him it was just a perfect storm of things that happened you know and then the streak the streak ended I literally quick impression was, for you. Yes. <laughs> I, I literally was about to take a bite of pizza <laughs> and that happened. I'm not, I'm not joking. That is like exactly what was going to happen. And I, I was like, because that was just so unbelievable moments yeah. like that. I feel like that was the last time wrestling really, really surprised me, shocked me. You know, came out of nowhere, yeah. sort of thing. People were, uh, they thought it was a botch. They thought it was a Brock right. botch. They thought it was a ref botch. But then they put the scoreboard up on the Titan Tron, which was like a mile high. 
and people mm. started starting to sink in and they were like no way but, but see if, re- if you remember they did not play music they did not put up the score right away right away yeah, yeah. It, paul yeah, Heyman yeah, didn't know about it I, it wasn't an audible it wasn't d- decided in the match but the only people that knew about it was brock and undertaker the ref didn't know about it because the ref also mm. thought he fucked up but um a little fourth wall is when you're being pinned and you're going to kick out of the pin, you look at the ref. If you're going to stay down for the three count, you keep your eyes shut. Taker's eyes were shut. And ref was like, I got to count this three. He's like, I hope, I'm not, I hope I'm not ruining this. What a, what a three count match. I would have I been pissing my pants making that three count. Oh, I know, right? You're just like, I'm fired. Yes, three. Should have been Earl Hebner, you know, not screwing Bret Hart, you know, but yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> another Dave, different story. Dave That's a whole different story. <laughs> uh, and for number three i have wrestlemania 21 this was just a changing of the guard here this was the next era coming in you know after having austin and stone cold and you know all those guys now the the torch is being passed to john cena and batista yep <laughs> we had Orton versus undertaker and akibono of course <laughs> and uh you know, that image of Big Show in a thong is still Never, in my head. ever, no. <laughs> no. I, was, I was almost going to forget about it until, you, until we all brought it up right now. So, thank oh, yes, God. absolutely. This is, this is something that Matt would normally say, but he's not here. He's at work. <laughs> but this is what Matt would normally say. <laughs> Shout out to Don Callis there. Don Callis. Um, yes. So, for me, I actually was outside of the arena that day looking for tickets but sold out that thing sold out so quick uh but yes wrestlemania 21 number two wrestlemania 18 uh i have fond memories about this wrestlemania Uh, i saw it with with ivan at our friend's house and man like to this moment i haven't had a wrestlemania like feeling as i did that day years ago you've known ivan for 19 years yeah yeah that's awesome since you know, 2000. 2000, bro. Love that, you guys. I'm, so, I'm only been around for six months. So. Well, we, we feel like we've known you for the same time, too, as well. So don't. Aww. Our heart is open, remember. Oh, my heart is open. <laughs> I love that. That's my favorite quote of my own. <laughs> uh, and I remember freaking Rock and Hogan. Oh you know, uh, yeah, half the room was going for Rock, half the room was going for Hogan. I was going for Hogan. That it, it was a good yeah. match, considering it was like an older Hogan who was never known for being a uh, in ring technician to begin with. But Rock really, they really put on a show for each other. did. I loved it. It was a fantastic sell on both sides. Very great. I remember Mike and I we were debating about it. Hogan, that he's like, no, the Rock. I'm like, Hogan, yeah. Rock. Oh, <laughs> I was Hogan. a Rock guy. This is man. actually, this is actually, when I actually kind of want to rewatch this one, so I'm gonna like save this. So thank you for bringing that one up. Yeah, of course, mm-hmm. worth a watch for sure. Um, let's see, number one, number one is WrestleMania 17. Man, Ooh. 17. That's just the WrestleMania. Uh, Every now and again, I watch TLC 2 or the, the hardcore match where Raven gets thrown through a window by Kane. Oh, my God. Um, you know, you had Angle versus Benoit. You had Edge. No, I mean, uh, Eddie Guerrero versus uh, Test. Oh, Test, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... Um, wait, who did Angle face? Kane? No, no, not Kane. Who did he face? Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit. And what, right? He yeah. did. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I'm bringing up the cards as you talk about them. So, I can okay. myself. Yeah, yeah. Angle and Benoit. Yeah. And of course, uh, Triple H, Undertaker, and Rock Austin. Uh, man, what a, what a WrestleMania that was. I did not see it live or, you know, while it was happening. I saw it later on. Uh, but still, you know, it didn't change how, how awesome it was to watch it. Uh, definitely my number one WrestleMania. Anytime anybody asks, that's my go-to right there. And so far, no other WrestleMania has been able to top it. So there you go. Two honorable mentions. First being number 35. And, you know, it, it's more of a recent WrestleMania. So I, let's see if it, te- if it lasts the, the test of time, right? Uh, but, you know, first ever women's main event 
uh, I I was hyped about it. You know, R- Ronda Rousey. I had been following her career since UFC, and you know, since Strike Force, really. And you know, you had Becky Lynch. I, I was a Becky Lynch guy at the time, and still am. And you know, Charlotte. So she got added in there too. Uh, awesome, <laughs> great main event. Uh, but you know, she Charlotte is definitely capable of being in the, in the main event for sure. Um, but yeah, the the event itself I, I enjoyed quite a bit too, more so than other recent WrestleManias. So thirty five stands out. Right. And my second honorable mention is one that I actually attended. The only WrestleMania I've, I've attended, WrestleMania thirty one. Oh, I think it's a twelve. No, no, no. Uh, I yeah, wish. that was in that was in, in, at the Bay San Francisco area, but I will say Santa Clara, Levi's, Levi's Stadium. Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, what a what a journey that was, and honestly, what a weekend that was. Uh, I I can honestly say that it's so it was so easy to see the superstars walking around the area. I remember, and this was before it got revealed or announced. I guess you could say that Rusev and Lana were going out. Oh, me and my friends, we saw them having dinner and we're like, wait a minute, what? So, you know, we were, it was kind of like, oh, wow, you know, sort of thing. And then uh, we ate at Johnny Rockets and two, di- two tables down, Jerry the King Lawler was eating at Johnny Rockets with us or not with us, but, you know, in the same, right. same restaurant. Uh, and uh, I got to meet RVD coming out of a pizza place Oh, of course he was. Meet the munchies will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, I've, there you go. So honestly, it, I, I definitely recommend going to WrestleMania. I mean, obviously, right? And kind of going, walking around and experiencing the the everything that it has to offer, you know? So number 31, but the show itself, right? Um, Triple H and Sting. Sting Dang. was supposed to win, man. I, I was like Audible. so bummed that, that he didn't. Stay. Yeah. Um, so you know, Dang. but still I enjoyed the whole DX NWO thing, right? Mm-hmm. And that was pretty cool. Fan service. And let's I just see. want to say that six pac sold the shit out of that punch of from Hogan. <laughs> yes, he did. He sold it like clean. Like, come on, I didn't even hit him. <laughs> come on, really? You swear that punch. He fucking like flew. He like flew? <laughs> I, I always remember the that moment when Seth Rollins came out with the money in the bank, the, that pop, you know, uh, I'll never forget that. Also, you were and, there. For that. Yeah, it was it was great, great, great moment. So 31 second honorable man. mention. Don't, don't don't worry, man. Circle of the Bay will be at WrestleMania 2023, bro. We'll be oh, there. Most definitely. That's a yeah. must, bro. We have a enough time to gather funds and get the tickets to go and there's no questions asked you're going and we're going to drag matt out of his damn workplace if he's still working there two years from now mike could walk there yeah i could just... it's at the it's at the <laughs> usc campus right not the inglewood no, 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 one no it's oh, at sofi so so in, Ingl- in inglewood okay yeah you can walk, walk there. there it would take a little bit longer uh, yeah i'll be right the there sitting next to vladimir How long? <laughs> <laughs> no uh, the, the super fan that's getting his documentary. <laughs> yes, the super fan. The super fan. Oh, he doesn't know. He's about been it. to I have no all, idea what all these events. Talking about. Oh, that, Mike. That yeah. Mike. So Nicholas, uh, the tag champ. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. So there's this super, super fan that's been going to WWE events since the '80s, I believe, and they they did a documentary or they're releasing a documentary about him. Uh, so it, it's called Super Fan. And it's his story, and I'll oh, recognize him yeah. when I see him because there's a couple of faces that pop into my head. Yeah, he was at one night stand. He was at a number of events, and he has all of that, you know, all the memoirs and all the tickets that he saved that he's gone. Oh, to I don't 80s. recognize. I don't recognize him, but that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to be either um, hard camera facing. There was like, there's just like this like long haired young guy who's always been front row. And then there was always the dude love guy who was at everything for a while too. Oh my god, that guy was at every dude ECW. Love guy was awesome. Yeah, he was at ECW, WCW, ECW. and everything. WWF. He was there for the Attitude Era too, as well, even before prior. He was even a Smoky Mountain for God's sakes when Jimmy Cornyn was running it. He was actually <laughs> there. He was fucking there, and I'm like, what? What are you doing there? Oh my god, but you that guy's a met? legend. You, you know who I met? I met that that one guy when the streak 
got in, when it, it, it oh, ended. Uh-huh. The, the, he went like, he was like that. Yeah, that's that's the impression that I was doing. Was yeah, the yeah, yeah. gentleman? I, I yeah, met he, that guy. He got famous off of that. Mm-hmm. Really famous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how many how many memes can you use for that? Like, how many memes can you use? <laughs> right? Yeah, him and Ms. Girl need to have like a podcast. <laughs> All right, now let's go to the wheel. Let's see who's last. Let's see. All right, here we go. Oh, what happened? Oh, wait. There we go. You gotta spin it. No, it's just like I accidentally misclicked. Ah. Uh, Oh, sorry on your name. Ah, oh, okay. 50-50. Uh, Mr. 50-50 right down the mail, buddy. I'll tell you something, baby. <laughs> so I think I approached this much like the way Mike did, where I didn't look too much at a lot of, like, the individual matches, per se. I'm going off of memories and what they meant to me. And the memory, right? The, the moments that I lived for and were inspired by. Um, and I would proudly show these to people as a representation of this is what WrestleMania is, um, and hoping they can relate to these moments. Um, so th- a lot of people might disagree with a lot of what's on my list for various reasons, but they can't argue with how I feel about these. Um, number five was WrestleMania number 25. Um, I really like that Undertaker Shawn Michaels match a lot, like a lot. Like that match was wild. I thought that was going to be the one that just Shawn took it finally. Um, whether or not it should have been Brock, I think for two other reasons, it should have been Randy Orton in their first WrestleMania match against uh, Taker. Uh, that would have really enhanced the Legend Killer vibe. And then it also, I think, might have also been cool to have seen Shawn do it finally. Um, I'd love to look up Shawn's Undertaker record. You know, just in general, it's probably not even, in my opinion. Um, but then you have John Cena getting the attitude adjustment on both Big Show and Edge. There were a lot of giant moments, literally, in that event. Um, Shawn Michaels' entrance coming down like, <laughs> Lord baby Jesus from the rafters. Yeah, the from white the heavens. Yeah. From the that was the best entrance of all time, I think. Yeah, I love that. One, one of the best. One of his best. Probably, I mean, I loved his 12 entrance, for sure. Um, but yeah, very iconic WrestleMania that I would gladly rewatch with someone who would be new to the product. Uh, what is this? This one's number four. It should have been higher on the list, but what I have higher on the list, I think, is good where it's at. WrestleMania number three, for many reasons, tons of reasons. A uh, huge card, 12 matches. Two of those reasons, one of the greatest matches of all time, whether or not it's in professional or in professional wrestling, in WWE or not, just one of the greatest matches regardless of where it was, Ricky Steamboat versus Randy Savage. Ooh, yeah! Um, I was three or four watching this. I was three, yes. And I remember this because my memory is wild, insane. Um, there was like an epic elbow drop. Ricky's on the outside. I think there was like an axe handle to the outside. I was like, what is happening? This is not wrestling like I know it. This is flying. There's fire. Steamboat's coming out with full regalia. Great match. And then you get the main event where Hogan... Uh, was advertised as this is the first time he had ever body slammed Andre the Giant. Being much older now, I know I've seen footage of them doing it before WrestleMania, but this is the most important body slam in the history of sports entertainment ever. Um, It made both of them, absolutely. Very iconic, classic. I remember seeing the VHS at Blockbuster in the big puffy case, all worn out, probably the original copy, 35 years old, just beat the shit. The tape probably didn't even work. Um, but totally a rewatchable WrestleMania. That was four. Uh, number three is, oddly enough, WrestleMania number 30. Um, mm-hmm. For all the same reasons that Mike had mentioned, these were moments. Uh, these were great moments that made careers out of Daniel Bryan. Um, and I guess you would say uh, Brock owning up to the streak, which we just talked about. So we don't need to get too much into that. Um, mm. But we also have one of the greatest wrestlers of all time who was just gone too soon. And she's still with us. She's fine. She's living in a palatial palace with her husband, Phil. AJ Lee defeated everyone in the division <laughs> for that yes. uh, just, <laughs> invitational. <laughs> God damn, dude. She literally, look at this list. Oksana, Lee, Alicia Fox, Brie Bella, Cameron, Emma, Eva Marie, Layla, Naomi, Natalia, Nikki Bella, Rosa Mendes, Summer Rae. No one's meaner than Tamina. 
beat them all one match, co-main event. Uh, and then obviously coming into Daniel Bryan being the first guy under five feet to hold a title since the uh, Rey Mysterio. Uh, fantastic moment. Yes, mania. I would have loved to have been in that crowd just popping like that, man. Super great memory. Uh, that was three number. That was three. Was that three? That was three. Yes, sir. That? that was three. Yeah, is this my number two? I don't feel like this is my, I guess it's my number two. Uh, I kind of don't agree where this landed. I might want to switch my three and my, f- in this one. So let's pretend I did that. Uh, but it's 35. And this entire card was a fan service. It was, in my opinion, it was pandering to the fans. But finally, uh, it literally gave us everything we ever wanted and didn't screw us around at all, in my opinion. There was actually still great moments, 35. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I was I mean, saying, you, oh, these moments were great because they were handed to us the way that we wanted them to be handed to us. But but I, I could tell you this was the longest WrestleMania pay-per-view, though. Yeah, it was, 72, was 72 hours. Oh, it was a long like, <laughs> And I oh sat there and Jesus. ate a whole pizza and loved every minute of it. Um, I think this was for the... Was this the inaugural tag match for the women's division? No, but the Iconics definitely won that, which was awesome. God, another tag team gone too soon. Just mismanagement all over the place with that one. Yeah. Um, the Shane McMahon mismatch was good. We finally get 11 years in the business, baby! Kofi Kingston wins the heavyweight title of the world. Fantastic. Yeah. Took him long enough. God damn it. Not his fault. Not his fault. We all know who controls that type of deal. But he earned it uh, and held it for a reasonable amount of time. It's not like he lost it the next night on uh, on Raw, like other superstars do when they're favored a championship on a big card like that. Um, the, the deep, Finn Balor beat Bobby Lashley. That's awesome. But then we get into the main event, the first ever female main event. I know the original plans were probably to be Becky and Charlotte, but then the Ronda Rousey train just got on the tracks and steamrolled the division. And then they just had to wiggle Charlotte back in there, which is fine. It is what it is. It's kind of a protected finish. It was unfortunately the last time we saw Ronda Rousey in a ring um, as of right now. But the beginning of the man era and Becky Lynch, who is uh, undoubtedly one of the greatest of all time. It's, I mean, men or women, she is top of the food chain as far as wrestling goes. Um, they finally let her have her own character that worked. Uh, I know it was copy and pasted Stone Cold Steve Austin, but to do that with a woman and call her the man, um, I'm glad they gave her the freedom to do that. And my number one. Ooh. My number one. I know every line in this pay-per-view like it's a TV show or a song. I know when what's going to happen. I know when the commentators are going to say something. I know every surprise entrance, every finish, every spot, because I would rent this VHS and my grandpa finally taped it from VHS to VHS so we could keep the copy. It started the Attitude Era, the greatest WrestleMania of all time. I'm getting very emotionally emotional talking about it right now is WrestleMania 14. No WrestleMania means more to me than this one. It really is everything um, I, I love about wrestling in one card. You have the lightweights. You had, I'm not even going to look at the card. I, I don't have to look at the card. I know this card like the back of my own hand. You opened up with the lightweight championship between Takamichi Noki and Aguila. Um, Aguila obviously went on to be Poppy, Poppy Chulo or S.A. Rios. who brought in Lita, beginning of Lita's career right there. We had Owen Hart versus Triple H for the European title with China handcuffed ringside. She pop shot Slaughter. Amazing. We had Ken Shamrock versus The Rock for the Intercontinental title. Ken Shamrock wins it, but doesn't release the ankle lock and he goes buck wild on 45 referees hitting belly to bellies, gets a DQ. Rock gets carried out on a, on a shopping cart, basically. Bloody, beaten. Ken Shamrock comes out and beats the shit out of him. We had, oh my God, the New Age Outlaws versus Cactus Jack, Chainsaw Charlie. They're, oh my, this is like ECW in a WrestleMania. They were throwing ladders at each other. The finish was getting put in a dumpster, putting the forklift on the top. Go watch this WrestleMania. I hope I didn't spoil it for you guys. I love this WrestleMania. Um, it'll never not be number one. There was no way in hell this will ever be top for me. That's my list. What do you think about what do you what do you think about the rendition of America the Beautiful at the beginning? I know that the uh, tr- uh, the DX band was playing the whole time. Did they? Did, is that their version of it? 
Yeah. That that yeah. band was not good live. Uh, no offense, God rest his soul. He did pass away. I do I do forget the oh, gentleman's right. name. Yeah. Chris Warren. Yeah. Um, something about that live performance was lacking tone and bottom, <laughs> and bottom end. Um, yeah. This is a separate subject I've wanted to have, but there's been so few great live band performances at WrestleManias. Um, there have been some fantastic ones. I know Rev Zero or Rev X, Rev Zero, with the band that did Randy Orton's theme song live. They crushed it. Motorhead always crushes it. Might Wasn't it overdubbed? Revolution Theory, I think, maybe. Re- Re- yeah, Rev Theory. Rev Theory. I hope not, but if they did, it's, all right. It seemed like that. They it might have played it live playback. and then dubbed it in post, maybe, so I may not have a natural opinion on that. Hmm. Uh, but the Chris Warren band never sounded good live, um, and I don't think that was their fault. I mean, I mean, I can nitpick right now a few things I think it was, like the guy playing a Stratocaster for a metal song, and it just sounded like paper. That's um, actually, uh, that was Jim Johnston. He played guitar? guitar for yeah yeah. He was he, played, he was, but was he playing it live in that band where they were all dressed in jinkos like they were corn? Mm-hmm. He played okay. music for the whole thing. Right, well, I know he like them. he wrote everything, but I didn't know he was in that band live during that performance. Mm. Uh, it just didn't sound good. They never. I mean, I hated the Xbox theme song when they came out and did it. I know they did No Chance in Hell. Um, I don't think they ever did that live. But no, not not good live band as far as like whoever the sound guy was. But everything else, man, loved it. I can watch that right now and just go through the entire script. Sunny, the de- the re debut of Sunny with LOD two thousand. Yes. Yeah. Um, and obviously that main event, beginning of Austin era, Tyson, Tyson, right hand. There's a zoom in shot. Tyson hits Shawn Michaels with the right hand, knocks him out, and then they zoom in and you can see Shawn checking for his tooth. Such <laughs> great direction. I loved that. Tyson pulls the shirt off. We expect there to be a Tyson-Austin connection, but the next night on Raw, Tyson's gone. And then Austin just takes the fuck off. And the Monday Night Warriors were in the bag the Monday after that, for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. My two honorable mentions. Very easy to cover. WrestleMania 1, Night A and Night B, uh, where it started at all. It was a, it was a simulcast. There was an, uh, That was two. That was two. Okay, that's the one that I mean. My bad. So, yeah, it was very – they bit off more than they can chew for sure, but it was a great idea, huge classic event. Um, I got to give it to them, though. That was a big risk that they took. And yeah, it was yeah, that, that was – that was, I mean, like, the territories were over by that time. For Vince still, Oldham, already by, by that time. So he didn't Yeah, and they, and they wanted – they still wanted to – corner both markets i think there was uh east coast and west coast footage is that yeah how? one yeah. In, in the sports arena and the other one was in the think chicago i think it was yeah so they were really like we're here we're we're, we're in charge you're, you're gonna watch us or you're not gonna watch anything yeah um just huge huge endeavor by by titan um titan towers on that one for sure I lo- yeah definitely i agree i definitely agree and that's something that shit we don't really now see nowadays you know Something that that's you, I mean, they were airing at the same time, weren't they? Were they like you? They, they were no, the, um, different they were uh, time. The, the feeds, I think. Yeah, you know what? You're right. I need to go back and look at yeah. that. I, I don't I remember really, them. I don't... Like, they, they would do a match in uh, like Chicago and be like, and we're gonna go over to where we're at the sports oh, arena. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're where right. This it match is taking place, yeah. but then another match would probably like a filler match would take place and they go back and forth. Um, Possibly, yeah, like yeah. moving like a non televised while that one's going on. Yeah. I know they probably had a good screen to have the people watch it. Maybe that could, could be one of the things as well. That could be what they did. But yeah, that's, that's a good question. I'm, I need to go back on that one. I, I mean, I remember watching it, and that's how they aired it, at least in the replays. I'm sure live. I mean, I, yeah, dude, they, 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 they even aired it as they a even, simulcast. So yeah, I they, think they were just both live and just switching back and forth. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, they even aired it in the movie theaters too. Like people that. that did not attend that were like were not yeah. a live attendance, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you were able to watch it at the movie theaters in California and in Chicago. I was like, what the what? Uh, that's crazy, man. I love it. I remember UFC used to do that. You right? I was gonna bring that up. They did yeah. like uh I know they did a lot a lot during the um it was, it was way like after Tito Ortiz era. No, it was after the Tito Ortiz era. We're talking it was like um like BJ Penn and GSP too, hmm. like that era, like the the seventies to like one hundreds era. Like ninety four. Yeah, yeah, in that area, in that area for sure. Which um, I don't know if they stopped it before the pandemic shut theaters down, but it was a good idea. But I can't imagine being in a room with a bunch of drunk people 
I mean, I've been to UFC events, so it's probably the same thing. But you're in a theater confined with like 20 people. So if like you want to get in a fight with someone, they're just right there. And you're like, <laughs> try, to, try to be a Buffalo Wild Wings watching that. or I'm Oh, dude, I only do that. Okay, so real quick, side note. I worked at a guitar center in Cerritos where in the parking lot 20 feet away was a B-dubs. So I would make sure if I was closing, hey, it's UFC night, man. Let me do my duties. Let me get my tasks done. Let me get the fuck out of here at 9 o'clock. Let me go watch this at B-dubs. Some of my favorite moments were like Ronda Rousey, great moments. Ronda Rousey beating Kat Zingano. While 300 people from LA, in LA, were rooting for Ronda, we were jumping off tables. I caught some lady who stage dived off the bar because she was a Ronda fan, dude. One of my favorite <laughs> MMA moments of all time. Oh my God, I love it. That's awesome. But we, we digress a little bit. But yeah, as far as great pay-per-view moments go, absolutely. Um, live MMA. And I mean, I, we all grew up going to like pizza parlor. You ever go to a pizza parlor for a live WrestleMania? Back before they passed the law where they couldn't air the footage? You know what? I never had the opportunity. I don't think Mike oh, man. ever had. No. The only one time I could tell you was Hooters had it one time. Do you remember, right. Mike? The one in Hollywood? Uh, Hooters had, had it one Re- time. WrestleMania? No, I, yeah, they had, they were prior to any, they used to host pay per views, any, any pay per views, even WrestleMania. Yeah. Huh. I only went to a pay per view once. I that don't know exactly. Long time ago. I don't know exactly when the cutoff was. I'm gonna guess somewhere around Attitude Era, but as long as one person paid for the pay per view event, yeah. it was paid for. So yeah. I would go to like Lampos Pizza in like La Palma, which is by Notch Berry Farm for people. Which, if you're not from California, is by Disneyland. Just, let's just say Disneyland. Um, the OC. And, yeah, you would go there, and you you wouldn't even have to pay as long as you ate food. Basically, you're paying customer. They would air. WrestleManias, Royal Rumbles, whatever major pay per view, mm. and uh, they could just do that. But I think WWE was like, or WWF was like, we're not getting a piece of that pie, even though it's paid for. You're showing it to like twenty other people that are not paying for it, which is you know two thousand bucks right there. We're losing. Yeah, which that, is now that copyright law where you know. Yeah, nowadays is like, for example, like how you mentioned that now. It just that's why they, they do cover charges like you know MMA because they have yeah. to pay for well, UFC has strict contracts with bars and local venues. You have to have uh express written consent from Zufa or whatever it's called now, BME. Not only that, but you have to pay like a three to five grand just for just for that pay-per-view itself. Like right. to order it, to order it, but then that's when you get your money back by yeah, exactly pretty much. But you you know, have to you have to be a lot official. UFC pay-per-views shown here. Yeah. Deal. Otherwise, they yeah. can match you hard, and they do do yeah. that. I've heard That's better. Yeah, you have to be corporate like like Buffalo Wild Wings. Like Which that, is fair. Example. I mean, I absolutely agree with that for sure. Um, yeah. If I'm playing a show, I want to get paid. You know, I'm, I don't want, you know. Well, I'm going to try to do that soon. Brass, WWE? I, oh, yeah. Maybe. I'm trying. We'll see. We'll see. SoCal fans, if you guys are watching this. <laughs> Or listening to us on Spotify or Podbean or Apple Podcasts. But, so uh, we're trying. I, we're trying. I want to give the people what they want. They've been waiting. We've Curtis been ranting. Videos. They've been expecting the best. And it's it, it, the best is last. And we got to have the devious one, Ivan C, coming in hot with his top five. I want to know what you got, brother, because uh, yes, everyone's list is very different today. I don't think uh, we've double-crossed each other's lists except for me and Mike having like 35 on both of our lists, and that was it. I would say that I'm just naming it off the top. Well, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and do this. All right, number five. <laughs> because I love tournaments, and I love the fact that it was the first time in a pay-per-view history that I had those tournaments, WrestleMania four, when the Rock, Macho Man Randy Savage won the WWF title. And, yes, I, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it because it was DB, I, I was really hyped because I was really happy to see DiBiase Finally being around that title picture, I'm like, yes, okay, he's finally going to get a shot. I was, you know, I was rooting for Savage. But in the back of my head, I'm like, I don't mind. I don't mind DiBiase winning because the whole plot line made sense, you know, for the whole Andre, you know, how it all started with the Andre winning the belt from Hogan, then selling it to Ted DiBiase. And that's how the whole dramatic started. To Andre, right? He and, yeah. Bought it, he bought it off of Andre. Yeah, he bought it off of Andre. And then that's when Jack Tunney pretty much played a tournament. Savage won it all. I was really impressed. I was impressed because that, you know, Aang had his spare two, Greg Valentine. Man, the Dom Roth was in a tournament. I was like, what's up with that? I'm like, okay, I loved it. I enjoyed it. Um, overall, the whole card was stacked. I, I actually enjoyed it. 
uh, every single bit of that, I'm able to watch that over again. I have no issue watching it. Because that's an instant old school classic. Number four, I don't get tired of it. The fact because it was a shoot wrestling all over. And because it was their anniversary. So WrestleMania 10. I'm going to have to give it with WrestleMania 10. Love the whole, I mean, love the Owen and Brett. Um, that was the last time we saw Savage 2 at the time as well. Um, I think that was when he faced Crush. Yeah, he faced Crush. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, seeing Perfect, seeing Roddy, seeing, you know, Luger and Yoko. I, I honestly thought it was going to be Luger and Brett for the title. That's what I thought. Baby face versus, you know, face versus face, but it never happened. So, I mean, yeah, I enjoyed that WrestleMania 10. Uh, number three, WrestleMania 12. I can definitely hmm. enjoy that one because, you know, Even Iron that, Man the match. Backlog, the Hollywood backlot, bro, bro. Not yeah. exactly. The Hollywood, by, yeah, Piper and, you know, Piper and Goldust, Taker and Nash, that's Diesel. I enjoyed that match. It wasn't bad. Uh, that was actually not a bad match. Um also, when you had Jake and the Ot- I think it was Jake Ottoman, I forgot who was a team with against uh, Brett. I mean, I remember Owen and Yokozuna. I think British Bulldog had two. Um, and I enjoyed that. So, it, it all it was the return of the Ultimate Warrior. So, that was like another one right there, even though it was a squash <laughs> match against Triple H. But it was the return of the Ultimate Warrior. So, I really enjoyed that one. It was not a bad card. It was a great, you know, kid us, you know, back as, as we were young to see that. It was not bad at all to see that. Because I was a Warrior fan too, so I was like, yes, Warrior's coming back. I want to see how he looked. And I was so excited. I, I remember telling my dad, rest in peace. I'm like, I, mean, I begged him all my life, buy me these tickets, man. I don't want to go. It was just at the Arrowhead of Pond of Anaheim. I'm like, come on, we need to go. Nah. But he, you know, I got my grades up and he ended up taking me to a live event and I was still able to see, you know, uh, Austin, Taker, and I mean, everybody else. So that was 97, the following year. I was able to go to a live event. Um, but yeah. Uh, number two. You you know it down, man. Uh, 14 for sure. You mentioned every card. You forgot one, though. The one that I was really like, is this is going to be the end for sure? And that was Kane versus The Undertaker. You forgot about mm-hmm. that match. That match you forgot to mention. But that one definitely classic. classic and yeah. I loved it. Because they look after the second tombstone, I'm like, oh my god, this motherfucker's not giving up. This means this taker streak is over. That's it. But, but see, no, but there was no, there was no reference to the streak at the time. Not as of yeah, you're right. It wasn't yet. But I mean, still, you know, like it's the Undertaker. So I'm like, oh, we were all fruiting for the Undertaker, and just the story itself was just really, you know, fantastic how they put it all together, and to see the, these two individuals. And making Kane strong. At the end of the day, this this match looked made Kane really, really strong as hell, even if he lost. Right. I mean, I loved it. Um, and then obviously Austin defeating Michaels. Uh, yes, Chris mentioned LOD 2000, definitely. Uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. And of course, you didn't mention the number one, Mike. Great minds think alike. Yes, 17. One 17. of the most favorite ones you can, I can watch over and over and not get bored of it. That one I'm able to watch. Hands down, order some pizza, have some beers, relax, and just watch the whole damn show with no interruptions. That I'm able to watch. I, I had you already said everything what it needs to be said. And there's everything it's, it's there. The TLC two, you know the the Lita Lita Jazz Trish Stratus, Austin Rock Triple H Taker. Uh, I think oh, did we didn't we see Regal and RVD? That was Regal and Jericho. Oh, yeah, you're right. Regal yeah. and Jericho. Right after he peed in his uh Oh, team. and it, yeah, you go. Yeah, that's what I remember. <laughs> that one. And then um Jesus, what there was a, so many. Um shit. I'm gonna have to go back again. Look at it. See, it's been a long time, but that one I can't get bored of it. Right. Um, but definitely you hit you hit the number one for sure on that one. Uh honor mentions 21. Yes, 21 was like one of my favorites because like how you said, it was a new era yeah. for, for Cena, for Batista, you know, and then seeing how I, what I mentioned, like, oh, on the, the last, the last uh, top five, you know, we saw the first time two tag team champions going out of each other. 
I mean, Eddie and Ray Mysterio. Angle, HBK. Yeah, I mean, and all, and, that? and that's, what, and that's the one I was oh going to get to. Angle and HBK. That was the match of the year yeah. by far. One of my favorite matches of all time. And it went um, longer than the main event. It went 27 minutes. Yes, but that match was insane. Why don't you give up? And there's that sweet shit music, right? Like, oh, my God. That was supposed to be – that's your that's your definitely Michael's Bret Hart 2.0. As much as people might get it and offended of that, but in reality, it kind of is. It's kind of like Kurt Angle getting, and getting redemption for Bret Hart. Like you, you screwed Bret Hart, you son of a bitch. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna screw you. But look, look what happened. Kurt Angle was put over. He won, and that was I loved it overall. He tapped out. So definitely, that was another great match. Uh, most definitely. And then my last honorable mentions will be 34. Why WrestleMania 34? Get the debut of Ronda Rousey's in-ring performance for the first time, and all alongside with Kurt Angle, you had Daniel Bryan's in-ring return as well, which you know him and Shane versus KO and Sammy. I was excited to see you know Daniel Bryan coming back, and also this is where we see two rest two Royal Rumble winners going on challenging for you know for the titles in Mania, uh, two especially that are non WWE, uh, the basically you know Shinsuke Nakamura. Coming from Japan, or also Asuka coming from you know from stardom, and just basically challenging for the you know be you know main eventing. So that's amazing to see that. And then I mean, the unfortunate they lost, but at least they had their mania moments. At least they they're able to walk out, leave WWE with those credentials. Hey, I made a man a WrestleMania at least. So why not? And that was also you know seeing two of the very best that. Put a by God, I'm like how Matt would say, by God, a great you know Wrestle Kingdom match between AJ and Nakamura. Of course, you can't compare them to because the best one is obviously the Wrestle Kingdom one, hands down. That's bottom line. <laughs> um, better than than this WrestleMania, they could have done better. Um, but definitely, I did enjoy that. All the uh, you know, 34 was enjoyable. I was. Yeah, I was in my I was in my buddy's house. We were actually, bam, geez, yeah, we were <laughs> we were just uh, partying it up. But yeah, we were all excited. We were all mad that Nakamura was that lost. We were pissed off that Oscar, you know, lost her streak, her winning streak. But you know, overall, it was a great overall pay per view. wasn't bad at all. I loved it. But yes, definitely, um, we almost pretty much had the same. The only thing, obviously, I went back to. The old school, man. I had to go back to four. I had to go back to four, 10. So that's the only thing I had to go back to. And, and 12. 12. You put 12 on there, too, which is uh, a new, new generation era, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like the last of the one of the new generation eras, I think. That's like right, 13 man. was kind of like a transitional. 13? It was between new generation and attitude, where 14 was officially attitude era. We could mention 13, the fact, because there were, but in reality, if you, go look, if you look at the card, the only two good matches was Brett and Austin and Taker yeah. and Sid. That's it. I don't even remember was was the main event like Taker and Sid. Taker you know, winning the yeah exactly. I, I yeah. only remember that Austin Bret Hart match because it stole the show. That was the I quit. That was uh the I quit submission match. match. Yeah, yeah, submit, yeah, submission match. I'm sorry. Yeah, submission match. Yeah, that was it. I mean the card wasn't like that. Ask. I think there was like a Rock joined uh, Nation of Domination or something. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. But the yeah. only thing that stands out is that Bret Hart match. Yeah, pretty much. I mean that, that's that's pretty much it. And this top five is brought to you by Modelo. So, <laughs> you know, make sure you get Hopefully. your models. Someday. Someday. You never know. We'll get, the, we'll get those commercials, you know. All right. So let's go now to the wheel, ladies and gentlemen, to see what is now our next top five for week 51. Woo, I'm excited because I haven't done this in quite some time. <laughs> so, man, let's go. Oh, man. I want, I want a challenge, man. I want a challenge. Uh, let's go. All right, here we go. Spin that wheel. Come on, entrance themes. Worst entrance themes. Let's go. Best okay. U.S. Okay. champions. I, I yeah. imagine that'll be easy. All right. So we got just best. Baron Corbin five times, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Best US champions. All right. 
Now, here's the question, though. Does it have to be WWE? Here's the debate that we need Definitely to have. Definitely not, because that shit started getting like NWA. W- 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 yep. w- there you have it. So it's overall, ladies and gentlemen, not just for WWE. It has, also- to, line- it has to linearly be the title right now. Because I know like other companies that are not affiliated with a major promotion have U.S. titles. But it has to linearly be the one that had transitioned from the territories to WCW to now. Agreed. So I'm with you on that. That's going to be the task for next week for week 51, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited. So, damn, okay. I was actually waiting for the best heel turns. That's what I was looking for. But it didn't yeah, happen. Yeah, that would have been fun. That would have been real fun. That would have been fun. Or best commentators. That would have been that easy. That, nah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Could have been easy. Could have been easy. It could have been easy. But, you know, we'll see. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in here this Sunday. I hope you guys enjoy your Sunday. Uh, we're once again we're back, and yes, and so you, as you see, next week uh, we will actually will be having a, a, our M- 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 MMA week coming up. So, and also we're going to be having Dustin Starr as well. He's coming back to the show as we're going to go ahead and discuss uh, the update of now the fruition of Championship Wrestling from Memphis. Now also getting a new territory getting a new uh, warehouse where he now will be the center of championship wrestling, that, which that was his big announcement. Congratulations again for you, Dustin. I cannot wait to, you know, to speak to you about it and your roster and who will be crowned the first ever world Ooh. heavyweight champion. Ooh. 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 We don't know yet. So the individuals that went on April 11th to that tapings, we won't find out until, you know, whenever that date is decided from the start. We're trying to, we'll try to get the scoop on that one. So keep an eye on that interview. That interview will actually come out tomorrow, Monday. It will come out Monday morning. It will come out. So make sure you tune in for that. Then Wednesday, we will have MMA episode number six. Right? Is it six or five? I'm, I'm already getting lost. It's six. I, I, what I do is I go back to the YouTube channel and see the last one, and then I look it up. So that'll be, yeah, no, it's actually six. You're right. It's <laughs> six. It's six. Episode six MMA. As we're gonna go ahead and discuss coming this UFC coming up, and that is UFC two sixty one Usman versus Masvidal. So we're looking forward for that. <laughs> we're looking forward for that, and also don't forget to tune in our weekly episodes Friday. So make sure you guys tune in as well, and don't forget you also don't tune in on matches of the week that you'll be getting from either one of us. That will be coming to you also as well. So keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on our channel. Keep an eye on your social media platforms. Make sure you follow our social media platforms. The description is right below. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. It's the host Stevie's one out to see. Here was the director, el señor Chris Kennedy, y el señor, el señor Dinero Miguel Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> Dinero Miguel Lopez, Money Mike Lopez, the man with the plan, the king of sting, the master of disaster. I'm saying it in an opposite way, but he is all that. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, he's, 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 <laughs> I'm about to oh. turn into Vincent right about now. I'm going to sell you a world championship. That's why he's the CEO of Circle Debate. That's why he's, yeah, he's the CEO of Circle Debate. That's right. Same to you guys. Au revoir. Good day. And enjoy your Sunday. And we'll see you guys soon. All right, we're good.